Great. Okay. We will call the meeting to order. And as usual, we will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. Thank you. This sign and sheet is nicely put away. Inside there, and then it's long. Um, I think everyone has had hopefully ample time to review the minutes both the budget hearing minutes and the regular meeting minutes from May 2nd. So um, does anyone have any comments or questions? We have a chance to do that over the internet. Yep. So on that note, I, can, <laughs> I will make a motion to approve first the budget hearing minutes. Can I get a second? Second. No, Beth, Beth should yeah, second yeah, everything to that. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? And that budget hearing may meeting minutes passed. Thank you. Um, and now I can make a motion uh, to approve the May 2nd regular meeting minutes. Can we get a second? A second. <laughs> Beth, Beth made another second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Then all meeting minutes from May have been approved. Thank you very much. Um, and we will move on to our regular business and we'll start with a WLS report. David. Um, oh, wait. Wait. I'm so sorry. We're actually going to um, go into an executive session. Um, we're going to an executive in, into an executive session um, for the purposes of discussing a personnel matter. So um, can, I'm going to make a motion that we move to executive session. Second. Corey seconded. All in favor? Uh -huh. uh, any opposed? So um, we will start our executive session now at 7:34, and we will be back as soon as possible. We ready? Great, so we will call and make a motion to call the meeting to order at 825. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, great. Call the meeting back to order. Um, second. Hello. Hello. Thank you. Um, and we'll move to regular business and we will move to our WLS report. We met a couple of weeks ago. Um, New York State budget library aid increased about $103.852 million, which was an additional $4.252 million from last year. Um, probably the most notable and pertinent to New Rochelle Library is that the public library construction aid increased to $44 million, which is an additional $10 million from last year's budget. Um, WLS is going to provide workshops reviewing the construction aid process on June 25th from 2 to 3.30 for library directors, trustees, and library administrative staff. People are interested in going for applying for grants that are relevant to it. There are two trustee education sessions, one Tuesday, June 18th from 5 to 6.30. Introduction to sustainability as the newest core value. I think these are online. And then Tuesday, October 15th from 5 to 6.30 p.m. on governance structure. There's a few legislative breakfast series with uh, area legislators from New York State um, at a variety of libraries in the area. Um, I gave a full uh, listing by email, but the one that's upcoming is um, June 17th, um, which is at the Larchmont Library from 9 to 10 a.m. I don't know which legislature will actually be there, but um, they are rotating among the libraries. Um, and then there's some in the summer, including one July 10th at Montrose Hendrick Hudson District and July 17th at Hastings on Hudson. And then we approved various uh, updates to policies from the Governments Committee, which is the one I'm on, including equal employment opportunities, progressive discipline, internet safety and use, and the employment handbook. And then uh, this summer, 
um, after the June meeting, uh, the WLS is not in session July or August. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. President's report. Last one. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I'm gonna do it and I have some notes, so just bear with me, everybody and all of you here in the audience. <laughs> so, okay, so after six and a half years, tonight is my last meeting. Can I video this? Am I allowed to? I suppose. <laughs> tonight is my last meeting after six and a half years. I think I have, I think, I think I've attended 73 of 78 meetings. Wow, that's impressive. Um, and I've sat on almost every committee we have, with the finance committee, I think, being the exception. Um, I've worked on policies, on budgets and contracts, on building audits, and on uh, sustainability, uh, what's it called, strategic plan. Yeah, that was, that was fun. Um, I've had the pleasure over these years of working with and learning from 12 dedicated trustees, three wonderful WLS representatives who have advocated for New Rochelle Public Library at the county level, uh, numerous elected officials who've secured millions of dollars for our library from New York State, um, and of course, with our incredible library staff, without whom, our library would be a mere shadow of its current self. Um, I've had the privilege, the privileged opportunity to engage in conversations with so many impassioned New Rochellians about the vitally important role our library plays in our community. And I could go on and on and on, but we've already been here for an hour. <laughs> um, I cannot overstate how meaningful this time has been professionally and civically and above all, personally, I'm leaving this board knowing how much work we've carried out together and how much work there is still left to do and how that work will take you away from your families, from time with friends, from your paying jobs, and from time you'd maybe rather be spending as a patron of the library, attending programs or learning a new skill or simply being retro and reading a book. Um, sometimes the work can feel thankless, and as library trustees, our work is not always glamorous, but nevertheless, the work is meaningful, and the work matters, and I know that you all know that, and I know that you all know that through all that you give, you are ensuring um, that our library will continue to matter. So thank you. Thank you, Paula. Thank you, Beth. Thank you, David. Thank you, Jocelyn. Thank you, Rihanna. Thank you, Tatiana. Thank you, Hala. Thank you, Jessica and Jean. Thank you, Valda. <laughs> and you will always have an enthusiastic library cheerleader um, rooting for you. And In addition to my impassioned, um, you know, goodbye, I also want to say hello to Jocelyn Bowling Dixon, who we met through the ether last month and who is here with us now um, and has been doing a wonderful job. And we're very thankful to have you as our interim director. Um, I also want to make sure we mention um, a huge thank you to our community for um, passing our budget, which uh, happened last month. And um, we are so grateful and eternally grateful for the continued support of our community um, because we do ask a lot. We do a lot with what we ask for. Um, and so I think it's always important that we remember that and that we always are yelling from the rooftops how much we do with what we ask from our community. Um, but they give to us and, um, and so that's a really privileged and wonderful thing. Um, and I think that's it for me. So I'm going to pass it on to Jocelyn for the director. Man, I have to follow that. <laughs> oh. Well, thank you, Whitney. And um, thank you all for welcoming me here. Um, I've really enjoyed my time here being the interim director. Oh, yeah. yes. There you go. 
Is that better? Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll say that again. Um, thank you, Whitney. And, and I just want to say um, thank you for the welcome. Thank you to the board um, for welcoming me here to the library. It's been a great experience so far. Um, I love working with the team. Um, Jean and Jessica have been great right-hand women in the office, um, and all the teams in the library um, have been fantastic to work with. So um, I'm really grateful for the opportunity to um, help the library um, with the transition to selecting its next director. So I just want to take that time before we dive into some little business here. Um, and so um, with that, I will do my report. So um, I'm going to keep it brief because it is the trust, Board of Trustees meeting and it's not a, the director's meeting, as, as I have said all week. And so I just have some operational items. Um, I have some contracts um, for you all to, I, I included them earlier this week. And so I um, hope you had a chance to review them. One of them is a repeat one. Um, it's the 2024 Arts Alive grant. Um, it's something we get every year. I think Toby does it with, I think it's for the dance group that comes, I believe. And um, so I hope you had a chance to review it. And so that one was, uh, that one, uh, we talked about me being able to sign that one in the interim capacity. And then there's an office dynamic copier contract. And so that one's for a new copier contract for the youth services department. So that one, just really quickly, just let me give you an overview for that. Um, that's for the children's room. Um, so that agreement is a 60 month term at a monthly fee of 113, which includes maintenance along with a thousand black and 500 color prints each month. So that's a nice upgrade for the um, children's department computer. So that contract is in there too. And I sent it a little earlier. And so that's also about that here tonight. Oh, so let's sign that. Um, Um, I can ask. I'm not sure. Does it roll over? Like if they if they do like nine ninety nine copies, do they get no? She says no. <laughs> yeah, good question. Okay. Um I'll move to the the grants. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, want me to do the grants? Okay, so the grants that are upcoming. So um, David, who I had the pleasure of meeting, um, thank you, David, for stopping by and we had a nice chat. Um, we have the upcoming New York State Construction Grant for 2025. So it's time to start talking about that. That's not one that you wanna wait on because it comes, you have to turn it in, in August. Yeah. So we have to get the estimates and those kind of things together. And we have to be talking about the projects. And so the recommended projects after talking to um, Jean and Rob and talking to the team, um, we've talked about doing a, um, getting the roof replaced over the theater. So here where we're sitting right now, which includes the skylights and then getting ADA compliant um, and energy efficient bathrooms and kitchens on the second floor. Um, and for the, for the kitchen and that room area there too, we're talking about carpet, we're talking about furniture that kind of thing too, right? In the hallway also in that area. Mm -hmm. So those are the two um, items that we're thinking of um, doing for the grant to ask for the foundation to support. Um, so right now we've had um, some contractors come through, we walk through um, and we got some estimates rolling. So um, I'm just putting that on the table right now to kind of chew on, to nibble on, to think about right now. Um, we'll bring some more solid estimates for next month in July. Uh, and then we can play with it then and talk a little further and you all can, you know, we'll have some more inputs for you all to put in next month. But I just wanted to put on the table and if you had any questions or anything that you wanted to reply to that so far. Yeah. Any thoughts about those? Sound good? Uh, Jocelyn, can you, what did you say that the the grant amount was you said it's New York State grants amount. Oh well, I think uh, David, how much is it total? It's about I think it's about ten. Mm -hmm. ten million dollars. Right, and then um, whatever we put forth, I think you have to come up with twenty five percent, right? Yeah. So and the total so, amount. Yeah. That's been out is forty four million. Mm -hmm. it's right. 10 million this year. Mm -hmm. so for the whole for the whole state, pot, basically. Right. Okay. Correct. 
Okay, right. so right. we we put in for a part of that pot. Okay. Right. Yeah, and there's a matching requirement. Right. 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 Correct. Exactly. Right. right. Okay. So we try to do doable things. Right. I, you know, I the whole roof. Correct, because the whole roof we do need to replace. That's going on a million dollars. I would love to put that in there um, if we had that match, but um, this is a good start. And then it kind of coordinates with the with the room I was talking about on the second floor too. It kind of goes together nicely. Um, so that was another thought. So, um, you know, it's not the makerspace. It's not, you know, the bells and whistles, but it's time for some kind of infrastructure kind of things at this point. So we had, we did have a conversation with the team about that too. Um, so it's not, just something that we talked about just in a closed door room. You know, it's something we talked about as a team as well um, in terms of, you know, let's look at some other things that we can do, especially, you know, the bathrooms, the kitchen, mm -hmm. things that we, we haven't touched probably since the building has been built. Um, so that's the line of thinking. And then to the point of your question, it's something doable we can do, like pieces we could do in terms of the match, in terms of getting the piece of the pie, because the forty-four million's got to go through the whole right. state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, and then speaking of grants, uh, we did get E-rate funded, so that's good news. Yes. Um, and that's what I was running upstairs to get. So forgive me for holding up the show. I was like, oh, my E-rate approval is in here. So Daniel wrote this much more eloquently than I could stumble through trying to explain so I wanted to print it out so just really quickly um I'm just going to read what he wrote <laughs> the financial breakdown of the grant and matching library contribution is as follows the total cost of all services including internet service basic maintenance licenses and support amounts to $57,231.01 with the e-rate e-rate grant funding this amount and the library committing to a matching contribution of $13,000 five hundred and seventy seven dollars and forty nine cents so that's great news that's a huge savings for us um and that news just came through um like uh, you know not not too long ago so it's just in time for me to share under the grants too so i wanted to make sure that came to the table so you all were aware great better yeah right and that is that's a blessing to have because usually you have to get a contract to do that because it's very complicated and so to have somebody on staff that's able to do that is um yes i second that thank you that he does that um okay so that's grants um friends report really quickly they had a luncheon um earlier uh i want to say it was in may uh it was my first luncheon that they had i, I think they do it annually so it was a nice um way to say thank you to all the volunteers um, that they they said they're always in the basement. I heard that a lot. <laughs> we don't see them all the time. We often see the officers. And, and so it was a nice thank you over at the modern restaurant. And, you know, always a great way to support the small businesses in town too. So uh, we're I was able to meet a lot of the friends and just say thank you for all the things that they did too. So don't remember the exact date, but I think it was like my third week, but it was, it was a very nice luncheon. So just want to highlight um, that um, annual luncheon. Uh, the foundation, of course, the gala was last month, but also the wish list was approved. And then the um, so the wish list, all the staff put together what they want for their items. And the foundation always is a wonderful source of support. Um, so we had some edits, had some questions, went back. Everything has been approved. And so the disbursements will be in July. So just want to report that out um, for the grant side. So I think that's everything for the operational side that I had. Um, for personnel. Oh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. And then personnel is the last thing. Um, facilities. Okay. So um, two two major ones. I mean, there's always things. I could, I could have this whole, your entire meeting and talk about facilities, uh, but we won't do that. So two things, the window repair, there's a floor, there's a window on the second floor um, that had a crack in it from earlier, from months earlier, and it's gotten bigger. I mean, it's it's rainy, it's hot, it's cold, um, and it's it's time for it to be repaired. We don't want it to fall on someone, we don't want it to crack, we don't want it to crash in. It's, it's a glass window, you know, mostly, you know, if you think about windows, they're not really glass like that anymore. And so, um, 
Rob has received some estimates. Um, we're trying to set a standard where we look at three estimates if we can. Um, if we don't have to do RFP every single time, but we just want to make sure we're looking at three if we, when we can, when it's possible. Um, with that one, Rob has reached out to at least three um, companies, and the range is running in about the $14,000 to $20,000 range just for that window. The window is huge, though. The dimensions are like, it's like 40 by 46. 40 by 96. Yeah, thank you. I typed all this earlier, but I don't remember the numbers. Thank you. Uh, it's very large. And um, it's the way that they want to replace it. One company has put out, like, they want to they want to do it in twos and, and make it vinyl and make it, like, one inch thick. So just to give it an upgrade. So that kind of gives you also, like, a view into the future, too. So if you're talking about one window, I don't know how many windows, if you've ever walked around and counted them all, but that just one is... is um, um, fifteen, fourteen thousand 14,000 to about 20,000. So just something to put in there, uh, in, in your thought process. And so we can, um, Jean did some investigating. We, we can file for insurance for it. It's, there's a $5,000 deductible for insurance. Um, but there's also, you know, there's also an opportunity to use fund balance funds possibly to get it done, but it's something we have to get done. We don't want a cracked window. You know, we don't want our library to have a crack window looking out either end. It's just, it's not, it's a safety thing. Anything safety you want to take care of. So um I think this is right. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna chime in here with two important points. Number one, um, I think it's really important that the policy committee look at a procurement policy. Uh the procurement policy can have a above like an up to amount under which you don't need to secure three quotes, but above which you should. And that way it's a it's kind of on the record, we asked three vendors, and this we, you know, we in as many cases as possible, we chose the lowest price. And if you didn't, you can say why. And sometimes you only get one quote. Sometimes there's like a specialty vendor that only one person in the area does it. There's all sorts of reasons why you, you know, you only you pick who you pick. But I think it's uh, good stewardship of taxpayer money to show how we are spending money, especially on facilities improvements. So that's my one thing. I think it's just best practice and good. Um, and then the other thing is we we should vote um, as a board to use the fund balance money. And I think the language that we want to use is an up to amount of, you said it was around 14,000 to 20. So if we say up to, because ideally we will, uh, Gene will file a claim with our insurance company and we will pay $5,000. And so I don't know if it needs to be two separate resolutions. Yes, please file a claim. And also if either way, use the fund balance money to repair the window up to $20,000. It can be the same resolution um, because really what we're voting on, yes. Okay, so Jean said she has building contingency funds starting in July of around $13,000, and she can take it starting from there, depending on how much um, it ends up being, and then the remainder would come from the fund balance if there is a remainder. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. Any questions on that? Okay, so Should I can- Should be a resolution that we, that we introduce at the next meeting and then vote on at the next meeting? Well, I would say for, I would say for now we vote on the, just repairing the window okay. at an up to amount of $20,000 and Jean will take the bulk of it from the building contingency and the remainder if needed will come from the um, fund balance. And so that's the motion I will would make right now. Um, is that any other questions on that motion? So that way we can get rolling up and not the fall. Yeah, that's okay. dangerous. I agree. Um, so, and then, so that's the motion. Can I get a second? Can you repeat? The I will repeat the motion. So, I'm making a motion to approve use of the, per Jean's comment, the um, building contingency fund to pay for um, either the insurance claim deductible of $5,000 up to the quoted amount of $20,000 at the highest amount and to use fund balance money if needed, if we go over that uh, building contingency line item. That makes sense? Yes. Did I miss anything? No. Can I get a second? I'll second. Rhiannon seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, great, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Jocelyn. Okay, you have one.
Okay, and one more. The air handler. Yeah. <laughs> just so, the air handler's not as clear cut and lovely as that one. And so that that one has big and small. That has long term and short term pieces to it. So um, maybe back in October, just tracing back to my predecessor when Tom was here, um, there are several air handlers that are pretty much at the end of life right now. And so the replacement is almost close to, it's like $1.7 million or something like that. And so um, there was a Senator Shelley Meyer. Mayor. 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 Thank yes. you. Yes. This is the language for this information. Yes. <laughs> yes. Which I typed into it. I did not bring it to me. You did. Uh, okay. Thank you. And so, um, but yes, back in October, uh, just doing the research and you know backtracking so that we don't repeat history. Uh, yes, the, there are, let's see, there's two phases. So there's some pieces, of, so I won't go into it. We, we don't have to do oh, HGTV, but it's in the millions um, to do all the air. So um, in walking in the door and talking to Rob, you know, I do meet with um, the, I, I call them the leadership team. I meet with them every week and just talk about, like, what can we do? Talk to, you know, we talk to you, talk to, and just talk about what we can do. Like, what can we do immediately? So Rob has some ideas about what we can do immediately. Um, and so he has put out, he has asked them for um, estimates of what that would cost. He has some ideas about what we can do immediately. Um, that are is on a smaller scale, and I will wait. We're waiting for this, is what I can say to that. Um, uh, carrier, we want to use carrier. Now we could probably get twelve different people and all the commercials we see on TV as far as air conditioning people, but carrier is who our who our system is. We already have a contract with them every month, and so you know I I understand why he you know wants to use carrier continue to use them. It, it makes sense, and we have the warranty. You have somebody every month. Uh, it seems to be a little difficult to to narrow them down to an estimate. I don't. Think I if Rob were here, I would maybe pull him to say what it is. I can't remember what you said, but there's like a a piece of it that we could do right now. Um, he he's he's thinking it's in about the twenty thousand dollar range, but again, I want to be really careful not to quote anything in particular because I don't want to tell you this in June and say, oops, I meant it was 50,000 because that's the worst. But I'm, so I'm just going to give you a real broad strokes because we don't even, we don't have the estimate yet. Um, he's waiting for it. I'm waiting for it. Gene's waiting. We're waiting for it. So we can, you know, see what we can do in the immediate future. Um, so we have air in the summertime. We're lucky that it's been kind of cool. It's cool. I went and got a sweater. I'm a little, it's, it's June and I'm a little chilly. Um, tomorrow's going to be 90 degrees. You know, it, it's going to start getting hot. Um, and so we, you know, that's one of the things Whitney told me when I talked on the phone, we were like, uh, we need you to get going on this. Um, and so that's something we've been talking about every week. Um, and I wish I had further information for you, but I can share with you that we're working on it and we're, we're sticking on to carrier to find out what we can do in the very immediate future in the five figure range and not the six and seven figure range. Now, there was, um, now, Senator Meyer, Mayor, Shelly Mayor, 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 she, we, I, I picked up the thread and said, "Hey, is it still out there?" She said, "No, it isn't." So, um, still out there. okay, yeah, yeah. So I just picked it up and say, "Hey, you know, just you know, you never know until you ask." And she said, "It isn't." So, but she recommended that we connect it to get connected to Senator Fernandez's yeah. office, mm -hmm. and um, I think you had a conversation. Senator Fernandez. Um, uh, called actually through um, our mayor uh, we were we learned that they wanted to give us fifteen thousand dollars so more for the library they wanted to give the library fifteen thousand dollars unspecified use oh. right I don't know, like 15 million. Wait, this is, oh. no. Oh, not 15 million, 15,000 dollars. Not Where are those funds coming from? This is like a discretionary fund that I believe the that senator has. That yes. can, uh -huh. And so Jean followed up and gave them our required information, which is our like EIN and address, right? Yep. And so, okay, so we can follow up and just say, 
is there anything else we need to do? <laughs> right, yeah, just follow up with them and then if we need to, but anyway, we got a random call, they want to give us the aid and so not 15 million, that would be like, That would be amazing. <laughs> yeah, not 15,000, but that could be a very big help in the immediate future, yeah. For sure. That could cover the window. We could cover the window. <laughs> That's right. It's almost a, and it could be, but Eric, the, it sounds like you type first because okay, of the deductible. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Maybe. But yeah, that's actually helpful. I've been, I, I remember you saying yay, and then I was like, oh yeah, whatever. Well, well, well. I think if I think I would have been like shooting star. Oh god, my eyeballs. Can, can, can I ask some? Oh. oh, go ahead. No. So, so how do we know how old these air handlers are, and what the typical lifespan is? And so those are the immediate questions. But would it, maybe Jean would Jean know or okay. Uh-huh. So for for the record, because Jean isn't mic'd, I'm gonna repeat that. There are five to seven of them. Some of them predate Tom, but they all date predate Tom. Not all of them are original, we don't think, but some of them and there have been piecemeal repairs over time, but a lot of them are starting to show their age and need replacement. Seriously show their sleeping air. Rusting casting and support beams, leaking air and condensate, frozen outside air and zone dampers are no longer working. There are seven of them. Um, they're multi-zone units. Um, they're energy inefficient. Um, you know, they don't meet code. Um, so yeah, that's they're at least 20 years old. Is that something that we've talked about before? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I, I mechanical was, things go in it and it was in yeah. the strategic plan. Too, yeah, as well. Okay, okay. There's a building audit report that you should probably put your eyes on to kind of look at everything. Okay, 1.7 million dollars is that how much part we're looking at band aids across the front. Okay, thank you. Okay, so the it's it's in pro it's in progress. We're working on it, um, and so we really want to get like an estimate. And I don't want to tell you any false numbers, right. just to be telling so you something. Do we believe that maybe by the next next Absolutely. month's meeting you'll have some more? Information? Absolutely, because okay. it'll be July then, and it's just yeah. you know. And when we reread these conditions, you know, we're just lucky that you know it, it is cold in here. Like I should, yeah. I should knock, I should take this off and not complain. Yeah. Um. That's actually, cold. so um. Yes. Thank you. Did I hit? Did I hit everything beyond the personnel? Yes. So now we got the operations. Thank you. And now we can move on to personnel. Okay. Oh yeah. One last thing um, on the foundation tip. I just wanted to mention. Um, I went to the breakfast for the. I just wanted to just shout out Lynn Green because she was honored. Um, Who was Lynn Green? Lynn Green. Lynn Green. Um, from our foundation was honored. Um, NRCCS celebratory breakfast committee. Um, Denise Fink is also on the exec committee for that, which um, she invited me to come. I just say thank you for that. And then Lisa um, Ikowitz was is all uh, was also on the breakfast committee. So I just I thought that was just great that our um, staff was part of mm -hmm. the community and our foundation member was honored. Um, and so I was happy to be there to see that happen. That we were honored along with some other luminaries last Friday. So I just I didn't want I didn't want to forget to shout that out. And and just again, which breakfast was that? It was that uh, New Rochelle Council of Community Services. And they were community champions. Um Lynn Green was honored as a community champion. Um so I thought that was I just wanted to say um shout out say congratulations to that. Okay. Let's say that. Okay. Personnel First, personnel is really quick. Um Congratulations to Neek Rodriguez. She retired as a full-time librarian one uh, in May, and we gave her a nice send-off. It was the same day as the library luncheon, so it was just it was a busy uh, thing. So uh, we just say congratulations to Anik, and that was the only person who sent one personnel thing. 
and that concludes my report. Thank you. So usually we make a resolution to accept the res the retirement of, yeah, and we need the final salary. It's what? Oh, the paperwork is in oh, here somewhere. I don't have it. I don't have. I don't, I don't have it. Is it in here? I never had paper. Unless I don't know, I have. Is it here? Oh, and you all need to do your um board. Dates. We'll we'll get to that. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Well, okay. So. Yeah, we can we can put a pin in that and and, and make our resolution around the ex Sorry, acceptance of retirement. All good. That's okay. We can um we can just put a pin in that for now. Move on to committee reports, and then we'll come back to uh, that resolution. Um, so we can start with the budget committee. And Corey, only one note was um we approved the city voted on the budget. Um, the one thing we did not mention. And our budget presentation was $150,000 of our budget is coming from um, rents. Uh, no, it, it just is library revenue. So it's library. raised through various um, right. sources like room rentals and other. So the library is responsible for $150,000 of the budget. Yes. There you go. Yep. So I just want to make sure we have that on the record. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Um, buildings and grounds, that is me. Um, we have a meeting actually tomorrow uh, to just discuss these facilities um, items and uh, and just kind of high level, um, you know, institutional next steps for the library and how, uh, how that should be handled going forward. Um, and that's all I have. And I'm sure next month there will be more to share. Yes. Okay. Um, community relations. Yep. Um, I'll make it a little quicker than I usually do, just because we're a little behind time. <laughs> um, there's a couple of things that I that are important for me to point out. Um, as we're heading into summer, um, there's a whole range of community programming, and also the Help and Learning Center services are continuing into the summer. Um, there is one um, important change um, when it comes to the Help and Learning Center that I want to make sure it goes on record. Um, our emergency co connectivity fund um, is coming to a close. So one service that the that the Help and Learning Center was able to provide, which was the the, the free um, Wi-Fi hotspots or the internet service on the hotspots, the Chromebooks and the iPads that we are um, that we're giving out. Um, it does no longer exist, so that's running out. So the the devices are still um, are still uh, for, you know can still be borrowed, but they will not come with automatic Wi-Fi. So they will have to be connected either to the library Wi-Fi or to other networks at home or or elsewhere. So I just want, did I say that right, or did that change already? Okay. <laughs> Wi-Fi that we were giving to us, and then we had gotten this uh, emergency fund. Mm -hmm. So we held that twelve thousand dollars. That will enable us to go through another. A year and twenty months more. Okay. So that's great news. I'll repeat it real quick because Jean is not mic'd. So there is a uh, there is a fund from the foundation of $12,000 that was held back because the emergency connectivity fund kicked in that we'll be able to fall back on now, which will extend the Wi-Fi program for another year or so. Um, right, I said that right, okay. Um, and other than that, the Help and Learning Center is continuing with all their great offerings, job search, notary public um, services, uh, English conversation circle, digital learning classes, and so on and so forth. And um, I will, um, not go in detail through events that have happened as usual robust amazing programming in in um, art and film and wellness um, but i do want to point out as again as we head into summer and kids are home from school the library as usual is offering a really huge range of programming to keep kids learning and especially reading so i want to point out that the 
Library's reading summer reading program kicks off on Saturday, June 22nd with a big event, Adventure Begins at Your Library. Um, that's Saturday, June 22nd from 10 to 12. And it's a big kickoff event uh, with a bubble bus and a band and all kinds of other fun things. Um, and uh, we, we ask that you register online on the website. Um, this is really to keep kids reading during the summer and uh, the little ones, the younger ones, zero to 12, zero to 12, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it says zero to 12 here, um, but it's not just about what kids read themselves, but also if they're being read too, um, they log their minutes throughout the summer. And then at the end of the summer, um, uh, they present their logged hours or minutes and, and can win prizes for that. There's also a special program for tweens and teens, grades six to 12. Um, they, uh, register online for the teen summer reading program and again um, can uh, can win a, a lot of prizes for their reading efforts during the summer. So this is kind of to combat the, the fall off with children being home for so long and try to keep them reading. Um, in addition to the summer reading program, there will be all kinds of um, workshops and classes and and stem efforts and wild wednesdays with the stanford nature center and all kinds of great things to keep kids busy and learning and um in our air-conditioned <laughs> facilities <laughs> until it lasts so all the the details for all these wonderful programs are online online registration is encouraged um, and I would highly um, recommend taking advantage of that. And one other thing I want to point out before all this great work starts, uh, one really popular thing that we have a couple of times a year is our drag story hour. It's um, on June 15th. So that's coming up soon. Rainbow of Reading was always really well attended. So um, bring your children. Hmm? I have to register. It's so popular that I recommend registering because it will sell out. Um, and uh, more information on all the other upcoming yoga classes, knitting clubs, film series, all that information can be found on the website. Excellent. Thank you. And by sell out, you mean fill up, right? It's free. <laughs> okay. Thank you. June 15th. Um, finance committee. Nothing to report. Nothing to report. You're good. You're all good. Oh. <laughs> Personnel committee. Uh, Thank you. So this, uh, so annually, because we have um, a few non-union employees, last month we've already addressed uh, salaries for two of the union employees. Um, tonight, I'm I'm asking for a motion for the remaining non-union employee uh, employees in E. Uh, Sorry. That's late. Great. Thank you. Uh -huh. um, uh, to receive um, uh, the the same increase, uh, the July 1st increase of 2.5% um, for the salary. And I believe, Jean, is that, is that just you now? Correct? Ms. Jean Manning uh -huh. is the remaining non-union employee that has not been addressed with regard to salary. So I am asking, I'm making a motion uh, that the board approve a 2.5% annual increase for, um, for Jean to take effect uh, July 1st when the, when the increases go into effect for uh, all other employees. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No? Thank you, Jean. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? No. Uh, no. No. <laughs> Thank you. Um, policy committee, the last. So policy, um, we will, we're working on the internet use policy and programming policy, and we will have something to report next month. Great. And then you are going to add. And that now for also procurement. we'll be adding the procurement. <laughs> yes. Policy. We will look into the procurement policy. Thank first. you. We'll get space. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, special projects. Yeah. But can I say something? Please. Oh, okay. absolutely. I don't I don't need the microphone, but I'm gonna use it. <laughs> um today's my last meeting. It's been, I guess, a quick five years. Um, I do want to thank the community. I want to thank the trustees, new and old, who really helped me 
when I really had no idea a lot of things with policies, things like that. You guys were great, Daniel and Sarah, you know, passed and 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 thank you guys for all um just whatever, just being, you know, friends on the trustee board. Um, I hope that we can continue relationship out of the library um for whatever but gene too gene i've known for so many years and thank you and jessica jessica thank you i'll miss signing warrants that was fun i like to see the guys they come visit me um but that's all i just want to say thank you for the opportunity and um to other things thank you <laughs> thank you beth it's sad mm -hmm. um good that brings us to public discussion. No public discussion. Actually, I, well, oh, um, other I, I oh, think that sorry. the board in this case becomes the public. Yeah. Uh, should, should I start or can yeah. I? So I, I just wanted to say thank you, Beth. Um, it's It's been a delight to serve with you. You are quite the character <laughs> and I appreciated um, what you have, <laughs> what you have brought uh, uh, to the board, um, and Whitney, there are not enough words. I will leave it at that. <laughs> but I will allow my other board members to speak as well. Well, Whitney, Beth, thank you so much for your service. Truly appreciate serving on the board with you, Whitney. We've been in few different committee meetings and kind of been here for a minute. Um, so it'll be interesting not seeing you here. If you've been here, you know, as long as I've been here, it would be longer, but still, you it's, you and I will be the last ones and then we'll be a whole new group. But we'll miss you. Thank you so much for your service and leadership. All right, I'll go next. Beth, uh, thank you for serving with us and um, you will be greatly missed. You're sense of humor will be greatly missed um thank you for everything and um Whitney this is really hard because <laughs> you have been I, I've only ever known you as the president uh, of the board <laughs> and so that are some gigantic shoes to fill um I think that I learned an incredible amount from you and um and doing this without you is going to be really difficult and sad because you know just a great presence and thank you so much for your leadership. Um, you're an outstanding leader. Um, and, um, I, you know, I, we, we will attempt <laughs> to, all of us together to fill your shoes. So thank you so much for everything. Beth? <laughs> I'm going to miss you. <laughs> it's cool. Yeah, I have your number. So we'll definitely, uh, thank you. Um, Whitney, I had a great opportunity to share a few committees with you. In my short one year, <laughs> I learned a lot. Um, you're a great leader. And thank you for serving for these like six and years. Um, uh, Beth, <laughs> it's been so much fun serving with you. I really appreciate your levity and the joy that you bring and the kindness and you've always got a smile for us. Um, and I definitely appreciate it. It's gonna not, you know, I'll miss looking across the table and seeing you there. Um, hopefully I'll see you once in a while in the audience. <laughs> Thank you so much for your service um, to our community. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, and also for like, I, I was not a part, I was not a trustee yet, but I remember that reading the list of people who were doing things for the budget. And I think that you were um, at one of the meetings or leading a meeting and that's so important to the entire community. So thank you for that. Um, Whitney, it's really going to be very hard. Um, I'm trying to compartmentalize so I don't feel um, so sad at not being able to see you there. Thank you for just for everything, for really for helping us, you know, know the rules for constantly be able, being able to remember the rules and keep us on track and also with joy and with openness, with humility, 
and with the love for this community that we all love so much. Um, the work that we do, like you said, is not easy. Um, and your family, I'd like to thank them as well for giving so much of their time, um, allowing the rest of you, Rochelle, to have some of the time with you. So thank you. And I hope to learn even more from you. And I will think, what would Whitney do? <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you. And as we are not ending the meeting yet, um, as a board, we have something for you as you depart. <laughs> Where are they? <laughs> Come on, boys! <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. Awesome. Wait, do you have the. Oh, it's, it's, in, it's in the back. Oh, it's in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Whitney, thank you. Thank you for all you've done. Thank you for all you've taught us. We will miss you. Very much. <laughs> and with that, would you like to adjourn the meeting? <laughs> President Barrett? Um, yes, I'm, I'm going to be touched and, um, speak into the mic. <laughs> <laughs> you look like Miss America. You look like wow. Gorgeous. Aren't they gorgeous? Mm -hmm. they gorgeous. So and I get to look at them all weekend because it's Thursday, <laughs> Friday, Junior, and that means I get to look at these. And I'm so thankful. Um, I'm so thankful to all of you. This has been very bittersweet. I keep saying, I'm like, if I had another couple of years, I would do it again and stay. And I, I will miss you all. You know that I've said it a million times. Um, and on that note, I will make a motion to adjourn. Can I get a second? Sure. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? A little bit, because I don't want it to end. <laughs> <laughs> Not on the public record. No actual opposition. No. Meeting adjourned. Thank you, beloved. Thank you, Whitney. Thank you, Beth.